A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for joining our webinar today. Before we start today's session, we have a video and some courtesy point to share with you. At the same time, if you are not the presenter, please remember to mute yourself. Global Connect at SBF helps Singapore businesses expand into overseas markets. Since November 2019, we have guided Singapore businesses as they seize business opportunities in Asia and beyond. From identifying emerging trends to closing deals, we provide a full spectrum of overseas business expansion services. With Global Connect at SBF, you can learn about new markets, customers, and free trade agreements across the globe land opportunities and scale up in new markets both physically and digitally localize overseas operations to ensure sustainable long-term success our singapore enterprise centers in indonesia and vietnam also provide on the ground business and market development services we also provide a dedicated digital b2b marketplace to quickly scale your business overseas with global connect b2b Set up your company profile in minutes and start contacting thousands of regional partners and customers. Last year, Global Connect at SBF reached out to over 2,000 companies, completing many overseas expansion projects through its network of trusted business specialists and professionals. In 2021, Global Connect at SBF will also launch new initiatives for Singapore businesses to position themselves on the international stage. Explore business opportunities across ASEAN, South Asia, Japan, and other markets by joining us at Festival, our flagship digital event. Become part of the Global Connect at SBF community today and start enjoying exclusive benefits. Customized business advice, access to our overseas Singapore enterprise centers, preferential rates for services, as well as structured training.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the Singapore Taiwan Business Matching Webinar. Today's webinar titled Achieving Sustainable Economy Through Adoption of Green Technology and Procurement. My name is Selena and I will be your MC today. The Business Matching Webinar for Taiwan is brought to you by Global Connect at SEF the Globalization Initiative of Singapore Business Federation. In partnership with our counterpart in Taiwan, the Chinese International Economic Cooperation Association, or SICA in short. Today, we are honored to have a distinguished panel of speakers to share their insights on the latest sustainable technology in Singapore and Taiwan. If any of you are interested to procure the green technology or wish to explore the available e-commerce platform, do leave your request in the chat box. Alternatively, let us know while you filled up the feedback form at the end of the webinar. Just a gentle reminder for those who are not speaking, please remember to mute yourself to so kick start today's exciting program lineup, let us first welcome Mr. Hemi Shihot, Project Director, Eco Based Development, Private Limited, to share latest green technology adopted by the company, how the technology has improved the overall operation and add value to its customers. Eco-based development focused on specially commercial and industrial real estate development. The company provides one-stop professional service on design, project administration, feasibility analysis, building solution, and Um, Selena, did you, I, you? I think you're muted, but um, I think you're giving me the green light. Is it? Uh, sorry. Give me one second. Huh? Uh, yeah, I think to uh, to kick start today's lineup, let us first welcome Mr. Hemi Shrohots, Project Director, Eco Based Development Private Limited, to share the latest green technology adopted by the company, how the technology has improved the overall operation and add value to its customers. So, Mr. Hemi, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, everyone. I'm quite uh, pleased to see so many attendees here today. So we have a hopefully a good panel here to uh, a good place to showcase our um, targets for the future and our actions in the past, um, and to show you how we at Equobase are intending to go to the challenges of the future. As uh, we all know, uh, the sustainability will be a very important part of our business uh, moving forward in the next coming years. So the, the title of my presentation that I've prepared for today, which will be rather brief, but um, I think I still hope to contribute a bit of uh, uh, interesting facts here, um, is about resilient supply chains and uh, there in particular about sustainable warehousing solutions walk you through um, how we set our targets there, make a statement about um, what we want to achieve with our projects and then uh, go a little bit into detail about uh, how we target, uh, how we tackle new projects and uh, what are we doing with our existing facilities. Um, first of all, what's the future? So I think it is uh, sufficiently clear that it is uh, expected from us as businesses that we will sooner or later go uh, carbon neutral or carbon negative for that matter. And uh, so for us, the challenge is very clear. We want to design and build carbon negative uh, warehouses uh, moving forward. And there is no when or if to it because um, we believe that this is the right thing to do. And in the long run, uh, it, there won't be a choice anyway. So how can we do this? Uh, first of all, we're looking at the project of the future. So uh, that means we have to look at uh, energy efficiency because the first and uh, most important strategy is always to bring down the energy consumption. Uh, secondly, we of course have to look at technology 
um, uh, researchers and uh, scientists in this world are very clever to uh, come up with a lot of advanced materials these days. Um, we have to take advantage of that. Then, of course, we have to look at um, generating energy on site to make up for whatever is rest. And um, I think this, every, all of this has to happen in the context of the whole digitalization that's happening uh, as we speak. And um, we would like to give you a little bit of an insight of the software support that we are gathering there. So uh, first of all, in terms of energy efficiency, it all starts very basic with uh, so-called passive solutions. So in, in warehouses, that means we have to look at uh, daylighting. We have to look at advanced insulation for walls and roof. Um, we think it's very important to have very good loading docks because that's where a lot of energy is, is going out in case you have a, a temperature controlled warehouse. And of course, um, to limit the, the, the uh, solar gains of the offices, we apply sun shading for those areas to reduce the cooling loads there. Um, beyond that, we have to take a very holistic view of the whole building. So you have in the building a uh, couple of systems that are linked to each other or they, they are influencing each other's performance. So that's the uh, HVAC system, that's the lighting system, uh, that's the IT system, uh, the controls, and the whole measurement. All of these are actually uh, in the historically being treated as individual systems one by one, but I think it's very important to bring these together and to understand that uh, a top performance in terms of energy efficiency can only be achieved if the four, five systems here are being uh, looked at as being actually one system very holistically. Um, then the advanced materials that I've mentioned um, are quite various. It's in the different parts of the building applied. So give it a few examples here. So I think uh, concrete carbon curing is, is one of the very interesting technologies being also applied here in Singapore and Malaysia uh, lately, where you induce uh, carbon into the, the car in, into the concrete. And by that, one thing you achieve is you capture um, CO2. And uh, the other thing is that you um, can reduce the amount of cement that you need and uh, the, by that also contribute to the reduction of CO2 emissions that are caused by construction projects. Another point here is uh, carbon reinforced concrete on the right side, an image that shows such a reinforcement. So there is no more steel in the uh, slabs or other uh, building elements. This is a very novel material. It's uh, I think Germany might be one of the front runners in this technology. And uh, so the, the local authorities here in this part of the world haven't uh, make make any codes for this. So it's uh, still limited in the usability, but we hope that this will get more uh, popular. As I mentioned, uh, no steel in the slabs that has two advantages. Again, you use less cement because the slabs and other members can be thinner. And um, the, the other advantage is that, of course, the steel is a material that uses a lot of energy in the, uh, in the production of the material itself before it even comes to the site. So uh, with those advantages, you, you have a quite significant impact. Um, then more on the side of the building services, we are relying very much on sensor controlled systems for lighting. Uh, we've had very good experiences with it compared with uh, fluorescent typical traditional lights. Uh, we, we have been able to uh, prove that we can save up to 80% of the energy spent for lighting. That's of course a major impact in a warehouse. Then uh, when it comes to uh, temperature control, um, I think it's also very important that uh, we don't have uh, either uh, fixed scripts or we have manual controls because those are uh, things that are usually very inefficient. So we have sensor, sensor controlled uh, HVAC systems that react to the outside temperatures that react to the internal loads. And um, of course we have to procure very high performing equipment. So uh, there are standards that can, can help with that such as ASHRAE and, and others. Uh, and of course, we have to look at a central control system for all these systems that as I've already mentioned earlier on. Um, lastly, even after we are very efficient and uh, we've, we've taken advantage of the technology, we still have to generate energy. 
So uh, I think for warehouses, uh, photovoltaic is, is a very good technology because um, it, warehouses have huge roofs and usually they remain unused. So instead of just having them sit idle, we uh, can of course install uh, solar panels there. So just to give a, a sense with the new panels that we have in the market, we can achieve about one megawatt of peak capacity per 7,000 square meter of warehouse space. To give you a sense of how much that really is, that's about what 200 households consume or or 1,000 electric cars consume. When you are in climate zones where heating is necessary, we have experience to implement geothermal um, heating and cooling systems in, in our warehouses, uh, which uh, is, of course, it's a zero um, emission technology, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, of course, uh, in Singapore, no heating needed, but uh, in other places it, there is. Um, and uh, for for warehouses, typically, um, we, you would be looking rather at uh, only the heating system. Uh, for the offices, you can also have a cooling system um, on, on a water base. So when it comes to software support, um, what we are doing is we are, we are uh, accompanying the whole process through uh, different kind of softwares. We have a centralized dashboard, here's a screenshot from one of our technology partners, where we can uh, measure the impact of the CO2. So we are having um, a track of uh, the CO2 emissions that our projects are creating. Those are then later on offset against the savings that we generate through the photovoltaic uh, panels. And uh, we, we have uh, we start off with energy simulations uh, where we then also test different uh, different design options against their, their performance and, and this is all then displayed here. So I think this is a very good system for us to really um, also provide the, the evidence and to be sure ourselves that we achieve what we're, what we're aiming for. Um, then uh, what's, what's next for us? I think we have uh, in the pipeline about uh, to install uh, new projects with uh, about 200,000 square meters of roof space where we expect we can have about 30 uh, megawatt power, uh, megawatt peak uh, over the next uh, few years. Um, we will look uh, into wood construction um, because I think for, for certain parts of the of the building that is that is quite interesting. Um, we also will look into power storage solutions. I think that is uh, interesting because the sun obviously only shines in the day and not in the night. So in order to make better use of the, the sunlight and to even increase the use on site use of the energy that power storage is, is a quite important topic. And then ultimately, I think we want to go to uh, what we would call triple zero, where we not only look at energy, but also go beyond, have maybe a zero water usage concept, maybe have a zero waste concept, but uh, that will be for us really in the next steps to undertake. Um, but of course, the bulk of the buildings in this world are really existing buildings rather than uh, new construction projects. So I think it's very important to also cast an eye on, on those. Um, the retrofit and expansion, and of course, also installing solar roofs. So here, an example of uh, an expansion project, which we then used as the occasion to also change in the existing facility. The um, there's there's a heating system there where we change the heating system a fuel supply from diesel to LPG. Also, of course, uh, to reduce emissions and and uh, pollution that that we are, have been causing. And um, for the for the expansion part of the building, you can see here uh, an image from the construction site where we then installed this underfloor heating system, which is a lot more efficient than the other heating system that we had pre previously. And uh, in this project also, we used geothermal heating and cooling uh, for the office spaces that were included in this project. And um, we have embarked on a journey to uh, change all our roofs into solar roofs. Uh, we are starting off with our project here in Singapore. Um, altogether, we're looking at 140,000 uh, square meters of roof spaces where we will have about 20 megawatt uh, peak uh, capacity of um, solar panels then. And um, that, again, to put that into context, is enough to power about 44,000 households or 2,000 electric cars. Um, so this will actually then uh, mean that all our uh, warehouses are energy plus or plus energy uh, facilities and, and uh, we as a company will become uh, carbon uh, negative uh, through those means. Yeah, so um, this 
may be familiar to those who know our company, but uh, for the others, um, this really is in the context of our mission that we have and that we strive for is to provide world-class commercial and uh, industrial real estate um, solutions through building sustainable innovation. So I think uh, I've tried to fill those words with some content uh, in the last few minutes, and uh, I hope that was uh, informative. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either my colleague Pauli, who is also here on the webinar, or to myself. And um, yeah, I wish to thank you very much for the attention you've given me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haming. Yes, if any of you have questions or interested to know more, do leave your request in the chat box. We will definitely send it to the speaker after the webinar. Um, let us welcome our next presenter, Ms. Becky Shi, Senior Project Manager from Asia Hydrogen Energy Corporation. She will share about the view of the future. Ms. Shi, please. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Becky Shi from uh, Asia Hydrogen Energy. And today I would like to share our uh, fuel cell technology solutions with you. Uh, in today's presentation, there are three parts. And first of all, I will introduce our company and also the status of uh, energy system in Taiwan. And then I will introduce our solution. Um, our vision is to develop more eco-friendly uh, and higher efficient energy system in order to transport the power generation, uh, transport and energy use. Uh, we are based in Taiwan at Shinju Science Park. And why we are uh, focusing on the uh, distributed energy system? As we know that uh, uh, Taiwan is an island country with high population, but we also foreseen the economic uh, growth in the coming years. So actually we will face the uh, demand, uh, electricity demand to increase. And also we need more power plants uh, to be established. Then we will face the problem with the land use, water supply and pollution control, and also the waste management. In order to uh, avoid these questions, and then we need to minimize and optimize our uh, uh, power generation with higher efficiency, also with uh, low flexibility. So we have to replace the traditional uh, generators and these kind of generators, they also have the problem with the noise emission and also the uh, higher maintenance cost. So in the future, we can see this depiction. Uh, we need more clean and efficient and diverse energy mix in the future. Uh, the feature of this kind of system, we will place the power system under one megawatt per unit. And also we will see that the efficiency will reach uh, 50%. And for this kind of uh, uh, features, we think fuel cells uh, technology and also bioenergy will be the optimized uh, solutions to integrate this kind of distributed power system. And also uh, meanwhile, quite higher penetrations of uh, renewable energy in the power system, it will increase the instability of the, the whole system. So we need this kind of uh, fuel technology to increase the, uh, the whole system, the resilience and also the reliability. So next, I will introduce our solutions based on the tech, uh, fuel technologies. There are two types of uh, fuel technology. One is based on pen and the other one is based on the solid oxide. For pen fuel cell, we need higher purity of hydrogen and it can run at lower temperature. So it can start out quickly. It has an efficiency around 50, uh, 50 
uh, 40 percent, and then it can reach 80 percent while working in a combined heat and power mode. And for solid oxide fuel cell technology, the thin gas from the industry is acceptable. And also we can use the reformat fuels like natural gas. And for solid oxide fuel cell, uh, we need it to be uh, operated in the best load mode. On and off is not preferable. However, it has a higher efficiency around uh, 50 to 60. And also it can reach 90% of the overall efficiency in stage mode. If we look at the SOPC distributed power system, we can see it has the advantage of the low emission. Since it generated the power by fuel and the natural gas uh, of the existing pipelines. And also it doesn't need the cooling water uh, at a lower quantity, and also it can operate for, for 24 hours per day. And also, if you, you are looking for a compact uh, power system, this kind of fuel system has a very lower footprint of land use. So it can be integrated into the building uh, power system in urban areas. And this is a real case uh, we uh, have demonstrated, uh, had installed for our uh, biggest uh, steel maker in Taiwan, CSC. This system can generate uh, 25 kilowatt uh, AC power output, along with the 60 kilowatt heat. And it's fueled by the natural gas. And the overall uh, efficiency can reach 83%. And here you can also see that the dose level is very low, and the pollutants are also very uh, si uh, significantly lower than the conventional power plant. And here it is our product work with the uh, Ballard uh, company. Ballard is a famous uh, fuel cell su uh, supplier over the world. We can uh, uh, cooperate with them to supply the fuel cell system from uh, 200 kilowatt module to one megawatt uh, scale. And actually here, uh, this kind of system can, can utilize uh, residue hydrogen from industries. So it means that it's totally zero emission. And it also has the advantages like solid oxide fuel cell system. And meanwhile, since the pan fuel cell has a lower cost in recent years, you also have a very low uh, levelized cost for each uh, uh, installation. And uh, while it is uh, easy to uh, start up, it has very high flexibility uh, up, up to the uh, uh, flexible um, power system. And here, the last part, I would like to show you the pan uh, fuel cells uh, applied to the mobile solutions. Actually, our uh, technical team, we have the competence on uh, designing system control and integration. We are able to integrate this kind of fuel system into the different types of uh, vehicles to develop a proportion uh, system for all these uh, uh, cars and also the material handling machine. And first of all, uh, right now we have a, a, a project on the forklift. Uh, since forklift, it has a very heavy duty over the daily uh, use. Uh, it needs uh, two ships a day while it, it is using a lead acid battery. For the lead acid battery, it needs recharge like three hours or more. But for the fuel cell system, if you replace uh, the battery with fuel cell system, you only recharge it uh, within three minutes and then you can use the eight hours shift. 
And also, since it has no uh, emission, so it's more eco-friendly. And also, as we said, if we don't need two shifts a day, we can el eliminate the backup fleet of the forklift. So you can save more space uh, in the area. And also, it can also work as a mobile power supply device. In order to refuel the hydrogen for the fuel cell system, we also have the solution for the hydrogen station. The hydrogen station, it has a feature of a simple installation, and also they also have the very compact and safe design. We can design the system, uh, design the station based on your need with different capacity, and also the daily refueling rate. So to integrate all these solutions to a master plan, we are now looking at to develop a close uh, hydrogen-based ecosystem. From the factory to the warehouse, we can actually uh, apply all these uh, technologies together from one site to another one to connect the dots into the lines, and then finally to adopt this kind of a technology to all the transportation system. So right now, this kind of uh, uh, plan will bring us to the future. We now working with the, these partners. They will provide, uh, provide us the uh, there are the advantages of uh, uh, technology. With this uh, advantage, uh, advantage technology, actually we can provide the best quality of the solutions. So thank you so much uh, for your uh, attention today. Uh, if you are interested in, in our solutions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Xu. For the next segment of our webinar, we will have two speakers sharing on the tools and platform to improve business sales in the region. The COVID-19 has left huge impact on businesses. Many companies started to pivot their businesses and explore various ways to increase their business volume within the constraint. Let us hear from our next two speakers on the innovative way to achieve this objective while we enhance our internationalization journey together. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the next speaker, Ms. Jasmine Tan, Senior Consulting Manager of BISMAN, to share on the Global Connect B2B eMarketplace portal. Ms. Tan, please. Thank you, Selena. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Thank you for attending our session today. Yes, uh, I'll be introducing Global Connect B2B, which is a digital platform to allow businesses to connect uh, from the global uh, market. Uh, in fact, today it is by technology that we can all get together in this webinar from where we are. And it is how we need to think differently from today onwards, uh, how we're going to conduct business. So Global Connect B2B is um, brought to you by Singapore Business Federation and Bisman System. Of course, uh, we are all familiar with Singapore Business Federation. Now, Bisman System is a Singapore uh, company, probably the only operator in Singapore to operate multiple successful B2B e-marketplace portal from the FMB industries to medical as well as engineering. So we are very, very glad to be able to bring uh, Global Connect B2B uh, to you today, which is a platform to connect business uh, to business. In fact, in the next uh, five to 10 minutes, I will be able to share with you how you can come on board immediately and be able to connect with more than 2,000 businesses and entities that are already on our portal. Um, Global Connect B2B is one of the only portal uh, that um, not only cover 12 industry sectors, in fact, we are also uh, covering 
services. So in a B2B uh, procurement and supply chain, uh, services is very much part of what businesses are procuring today. So we actually start off by sharing, uh, in fact, focusing on four key services from social to financial as well as professional services. And uh, we are also very glad to share with you that uh, uh, we have already onboarded more than 2,000 companies uh, and entities across various parts of the world now, as you can see on the screen, uh, from ASEAN to even uh, Europe and uh, US. And uh, later on in the portal, I will be able to share with you some of these companies that are already on board our portal. So Global Connect B2B, uh, the whole idea is to help businesses to be on board a e-commerce platform. So what does this platform do for you? It will help you to accelerate your business, especially um, you know, uh, growing, growing into a new market that you would not uh, be able to reach out so uh, easily and that fast, rapidly, uh, without a digital platform. And of course, in this platform, you are not only looking into connecting with this, uh, different business um, businesses in across different industries, you are also able to conduct uh, your procurement. In fact, we will help you to track the entire supply chain processes within the portal. And uh, we are also introducing a network of known buyers and suppliers and partners through a trusted network. So this is done uh, through, of course, uh, you know, uh, trade associations, uh, business chambers and embassies. And besides the connection and the transaction, we will also be providing secure cross-border uh, payment as well as logistic services to complete the entire supply chain activities. Okay, so uh, just a very quick uh, overview of Global Connect B2B, how we're going to connect buyers and sellers on the portal in across these various industries and through uh, embassies, trade offices and business chambers like what we are doing today to reach out to more buyers and sellers across the world. So basically, um, uh, our portal is unlike any other e-commerce portal or e-marketplace in the um, that what we are seeing right now. In fact, our portal provides the means for companies to be able to view and connect with each other. And that is uh, the way that companies can reach out to each other to form not only that uh, procurement connection, but also partnership. So, um, of course, our portal is also uh, delivers the latest technological uh, security and genuine players on board the portal. In fact, uh, all the players now, uh, all the users on our portals now are only um, onboarded through invitation. So it's just like today we will be opening up to all of you uh, to come on board our portal and be part of this e-marketplace. So I'm just uh, going to start off um, to share with you uh, our portal. Welcome to Global Connect B2B. In fact, uh, what you're looking at now is our Global Connect B2B portal connecting uh, businesses across this 12 industry sector that we are introducing. And uh, as a buyer or seller, you'll be able to assess all of this uh, 12 industry uh, sector, whether in products or even the company's information. So in fact, uh, by being a user on our portal, you will also have immediate connection to all these other existing portals that are already on uh, in the market and uh, operating in the market from FMB to engineering, medical, as well as uh, Thailand and also even uh, accounting services. And uh, for any uh, buyers that come on board, you can of course search for product across this 12 industry sector. But I'd like to bring you to um, this particular area that is of interest probably to all of you. That is how companies can be connected through um, you know, uh, this uh, company segment. So we are able to allow our user to browse by area. So you can see that these are all the countries that have got uh, entities and companies listed on the portal. So if I log into, for example, if I click on Portugal, I will be able to see all the companies that's listed in our portal under uh, this region. And if we were to click into one of the companies uh, uh, 
um, tab, you can see the contact information, the company's profile, and even the product list. So this is what uh, companies can do by being on board our portal and be able to reach out um, you know, uh, to companies in different industries that you would like to reach out to, as well as to be connected. And on top of that, uh, a supply chain process is also made available here. I'll just very quickly go through the um, transaction where you can, if you are a seller or buyer, track the entire procurement process on our portal. So a buyer can raise a purchase order to you and you as a seller would be able to receive the purchase order, accept process and even invoice the uh, buyer. And of course, uh, with that, uh, buyers or seller can take up financing facilities that is already available, logistics um, uh, facilities as well. So you can actually complete the entire supply chain processes within our portal. Okay, so um, I have um, completed the presentation here and I would like to share that uh, if you would like further information, please feel free to contact um, us uh, by scanning this QR code or even write to this email address and uh, we will then keep in touch with you immediately. Okay, thank you, Selena. Um, I have thank completed you, Mr. <laughs> Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes. welcome our last presenter, Ms. Hemi Liu, to share about the smart tools used in selling products online. Ms. Liu is the CEO and founder of Shuhu Corporation Limited. The company introduces A1 powered tools for e-commerce sellers, empowering them to increase their online sales more effectively. There are many ways to integrate innovative tools to streamline the e-commerce workflow. Let's experience it together with her. Ms. Liu, please. Hi guys, good afternoon. I'm Hani, the founder and CEO at Shoku. So today I'd like to share how AI tool makes creating professional product photos easy. So the first part I'd like to share why good product photos matter. And as everyone uh, know, COVID-19 has abandoned our modern lives, especially the retail industry. And as Mary Meeker mentioned in her internet trend report that digital transformation is accelerating. So the business who use the smart tools will definitely helping them to adapting the new technology. And with more and more people shopping online each year, there's never been a better time to start an online store right now. So according to the statistics, there, uh, there were more than 2,700 billion US dollars this year. And revenue is expected to show an annual growth rate that of the 6.29%, uh, resulting in a projected market value of the US uh, 3.3 billion US dollars by 2000, 2025. So with the growth of the online shopping, people are looking for a suitable platform to sell the products. And WooCommerce was the worldwide leading e-commerce software platform in 2020. So with a market share of the 28%, and the Square, Squarespace online stores and Shopify rank the second and the third, with the shares of 70% and the 10% respectively. So from the customer side, what are the, what are the factors of the cu customer purchase online? So it is shows that nearly 17% of the consumers said the quality of a product image is very, very important in selecting and purchasing the products online. So there are many steps uh, when selling products online photo editing, uploading marketing, and customer service. So what Shohu can help is providing the smart tools to reduce the time and money, and it can uh, accelerate, accelerate the selling process. So the second part, of, I'd like to share how to create the good photos with the smart tools in seconds. 
So as you can see, the uh, the the left side of the photo, uh, the left side is the real products, real image upload from our customer, upload from the enterprise sellers, and the right side is the picture that we help them to create with the AI. So AI is easily to generate those amazing pictures in seconds. So how does it work? It is very easy. The only thing you need to do is upload one picture, upload your product snapshot. And the second one, that our algorithm can dictate your product in that picture or that photos. That means we will help you to generate the photo for your product, not just not just uh, the photo for every every kind of the products. You can we can help you to customize the output photo with the AI algorithm. So the last thing you need to do is uh, take our photos and upload to the e-commerce platform in the few clicks. So with our uh, features, there are two features in our dashboard. The first feature is about creating the photos with AI. So we, we can help you to generate a realistic looking phot uh, photograph with AI and grabbing the the shopper's attention. And second, we have the auto tagging. So we can help you to auto tag your pictures, auto tag your photos, and boost your store's SEO immediately. And why are we why why our tools are different? The first one is you you don't need to coding. We help you to, to create the user-friendly user interface. So only you, you only need to do this, click the button and upload to the platform. And it is very too easy to use. And we can help you to create the agency style. That means you can have the scenario in your pictures. And, and the last thing we focus on e-commerce. So we can, our algorithm can help you to make the product pictures more beautiful. So the last thing is about get your products online fast. And we have the integration with Shopee, the largest leading platform in South Asia. And we have the WooCommerce and we have the Shopify. So you, if you have the store on those platforms or you, you are planning to have the stores in this platform, you can easily to integrate with our, with our tools. So about uh, our use case, we have more than uh, 116 small business in Taiwan, and we also have the global uh, the global users, and we also serve the enterprise users like the uh, they selling the products online. So now we are looking for the global partners, also looking for the pla e commerce platforms. So if you have the platform or partners in Japan, Singapore, pl please feel free to contact me. And the last three key takeaways here. Uh, the first thing is with more and more people shopping online, it is the right time to start an online business right now. And the second key, take, key takeaway is that uh, your product pages should have a high quality product image that will, in, that will in, uh, trust and help the shoppers to uh, with their research. And the last thing is with the smart tools like Shohu, it could be more simple to set up your business in seconds. So if you you have yeah if you have uh, uh, any connection or you are uh, if you are interested in our products, feel free to scan this QR code and we can have a coffee chat online. So I'm Hani. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you all for your participation. If you find the session engaging, we have another business matching webinar between Singapore and Mongolia on 16 June, 3 p.m. So if you are keen, please scan the QR code on the, slide, on the screen if you would like to register for the webinar.
the same time, we hope that you can spend one or two minutes to share with us your thoughts on this webinar by scanning the QR code in the slide. We really appreciate your valuable feedback. And before we end today's session, we would like once like to thank um, Enterprise Singapore, the Chinese International Economic Cooperation Association, whose support helped make our sharing today possible. And for companies who have received the confirmation of one-to-one -one business matching invites, please stay back. We will assign you to the breakout room in a couple of minutes. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.